I'm sure you've heard by now that Elden Ring has a mode where you can rock your socks against fellow gamers. And it's called PvP, and I'm willing to bet that you've heard horrible stories about it. Or maybe you've seen any of these PvP atrocities online. Over the course of several months and numerous patches from Software, the developer studio of Elden Ring, in case you somehow didn't know, diligently addressed and resolved most of these issues. In addition to these significant problems, they also made other balance adjustments that may not have been as visually impactful, such as introducing separate scalings for PvP and reducing the speed of the thrusting sword's crouch attack. These seemingly minor changes were not implemented randomly. They were actually suggested by the Elden Ring community, and the developers took their feedback into consideration. Still skeptical? Take a look at this. Patch 1.10 incorporated changes that closely mirrored a guide video created by Gabri, an active member of the PvP community. Weapons like stray swords, katanas, axes, spears can now break your passive poise entirely all the time. The patch has been universally praised for its positive impact on combat flow and build diversity, marking it as a huge success of what happens when constructive well-laid suggestions reach developers who are willing to listen. So a bunch of nerds from the PvP community united forces to create a video that aims to keep communication with the devs about any issues, glitches or bugs that get out of their cavern and show their ugly faces. All of this is aimed at capturing the attention of a wider audience for PvP, which is undeniably crucial in keeping the game thriving for many years to come, just as it did with Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3. This video will be split into two parts, with this whole video being the first part, whereas the next part will be uploaded in a few days. We will begin by discussing the quality of life improvements, followed by the specifics of combat balance. Rest assured, I will ensure that the discussion remains engaging and enjoyable for you, my little shake shacks. So, without any further delay, let's dive into that cesspool. Let's simplify things. For those who are unfamiliar, Elden Ring offers three multiplayer modes. Colosseum. Co-op. And invasions. In the Colosseum, you can engage in 1v1, 2vr2, or even 3v3 battles against other gamers. In co-op, you can assist a fellow gamer in defeating bosses in their world with a limit of two friendly summonable phantoms. And lastly, invasions, where the objective as an invader is to defeat the host and to disrupt their tea party. Now that we've covered that, let's move on to the balance suggestions. Three months after its release, Elden Ring's multiplayer activity is significantly lower than that of Dark Souls 3, when adjusted for active players of course. Despite having a much larger player base, this decline is mainly attributed to the full calling finger remedy, which is an item that allows you to see Solomon signs and use some multiplayer items. And this often leaves players unaware of cooperative and PvP opportunities. In previous games, multiplayer was less easily missed. For example, the visibility of white summoning signs was linked to embers in Dark Souls 3, and red signs were always visible even when unembered. However, embers offered health restoration and max HP boosts, naturally encouraging their use and ensuring frequent multiplayer encounters, as was the case in other Souls games. The issue with this is that the player has no incentive to use the finger remedy unless they specifically want to engage in PvP activities. There are no additional bonuses associated with using the item, unlike in previous Souls games. Thus, its existence seems solely designed to hinder multiplayer activity and serves no other purpose. Sign visibility should always be active when playing online to ensure that everyone is aware of the multiplayer options. The item desperately needs a rework, regardless of From Software's chosen solution it should have PvE bonuses. Do you know what Taunter's tongue is tarnished? This item is obtained after you defeat Mad Tongue Alberic NPC in Round Table Hold. Its sole purpose is to allow invaders when you're playing alone 
eliminate invasions cooldown, and allow a second invader when you're playing co-op with someone. Currently, Elden Ring allows a maximum of four gamers in one session. This is by default one host, two phantoms, gold or blue, and one invader. With Taunter's Tongue, you can have two invaders, making the invasion a 2v2. However, this system can be easily abused, because a host can disable Taunter's Tongue whenever he wants, luring invaders easily and keeping advantage by not allowing a second one to enter the world. Elden Ring's limit of two invaders with the Taunter's Tongue and one without it often results in unbalanced 3v1 situations due to the four-player limit. This, combined with powerful weapons and spells, makes invasions highly unbalanced and discouraging, especially for newcomers. All of these issues can be addressed with one change, increasing the player limit to six, with a maximum of three players allied with the host. This ensures that the host receives help from two white phantoms, as well as a blue phantom, but also leaves a minimum of two slots for invaders. This allows for various scenarios and matchups, such as 4v2, 3v2, 3v3, and 2v2. In most cases, the host may maintains the numerical advantage, but even the worst-case scenario of 4v2 would still be far preferable for an invader compared to the 3v1 we have now. Additionally, we should prevent hosts from disabling Taunter's Tongue during invasions to deter hosts from abusing it and ensure invaders can receive assistance. Dark Souls 3 allowed players to summon the maximum possible number of duelist red phantoms even when they weren't embered. The host should be able to summon the maximum number of duelist phantoms without any additional restrictions restrictions, regardless of whether the Taunter's Tongue is active or not, or if the bosses are alive or not. Making red signs readily accessible also provides a convenient way for new players to try and learn PvP with little to no commitment, and multiplayer items like Taunter's Tongue should not require Furl Calling Finger, as it's counterintuitive to the user experience and it should allow invasions even when the area boss is dead. If hardware limitations prevent a six-player open-world experience, restrict the six-player feature to dungeons, legacy dungeons, and or areas where Torrent cannot enter. In summary, increasing the player limit and removing these restrictions would rejuvenate community events and improve the balance and enjoyment of invasions in Elden Ring. <laughs> In previous games, periodic PvP invasions added excitement, creating unique moments in each playthrough. You never knew when a rabid monkey would come out of nowhere to chew ass and kick bubblegum. However, Elden Ring's implementation makes invasions opt-in, limited to specific conditions like summoning cooperatives or using Taunter's Tongue. This funnels invaders to co-op players, leaving solo players without PvP opportunities. Unlike the old invasions, Taunter's Tongue invasions are constant and disrupt the overall gameplay experience. Experience, eliminating the excitement of occasional and unpredictable encounters that made Souls games memorable. Also, just like when summoning duelists, you're also inviting players to come to your world when using the Taunter's Tongue, which kind of goes against the very core definition of what an invasion really is. <laughs> uh, it doesn't work if you invite them. Idly hey! Go home. Doodly do! So what can From Software do about it? Well, Similar to Dark Souls 3, upon activating a rune arc, a player's world should become open to invasions. Additionally, defeating a boss could reward the host with both a rune arc and automatically put them in rune arc mode. This would allow all players to experience PvP during their playthrough without needing to use a rune arc from their inventory. To make this system work in Elden Ring, solo host invasions should primarily occur in dungeons, legacy dungeons, and non-open world areas, with a few exceptions sprinkled in. This way, we can preserve uninterrupted open-world exploration in Torrent. This will diversify invaders' targets, making it appealing for newcomers as they won't get constantly destroyed by three-man squads. Same thing. What the f- That was dirty. <laughs> Furthermore, this change revitalizes the role of blue phantoms, making them defenders of unprepared hosts against threatening invaders, instead of currently being reduced to the role of absolute bullies when joining a host who usually already has help against a lone invader. This middle ground broadens the appeal of PvP and enhances the gaming experience, 
reminiscent of past games' immersive invasions. As for the minority completely opposed to invasions, they can still avoid PvP by not using rune arcs in dungeons or invadable areas, or simply by playing offline. Even when losing to an invader, normal gamers understand that dying and improving are integral aspects of the Souls formula. In this sense, losing to a human player is no different from losing to an AI enemy. And some of the people that complain about invasions can't even tell the difference from an AI invader to a human invader, so it's a mistake to cater to that minority. That being said, there are other issues that can reasonably deter people from PvP, one in particular that I consider would be the most important one. Did you know that currently there are no unique rewards for engaging in PvP Tarnished? The only rewards at the moment are rune arcs or runes, both of which can be easily acquired by easier means. There's also no sense of accomplishment or recognition either. No leaderboards, no ranks, no achievements. Not even a pat on the back after barely winning that invasion against a three-man gank squad. No wonder gamers outright opt out of PvP entirely. There's no reason to engage in it, so what can be done about it? In Dark Souls 1, there was a leaderboard for the top servants of Chaos. It would be great if From Software could reintroduce leaderboards in Elden Ring, as they offer a more lasting sense of accomplishment than just item rewards. Having leaderboards for co-op, invasions and arena duels would tremendously enhance the experience and provide a nice incentive to engage in PvP. To prevent cheating, arena duels should also be based on an ELO system. Alternatively, if leaderboards prove to be challenging to implement, making arena medals more rewarding by making them easy to lose could be a solution. This system would ensure that medals reflect player skill and achievement in terms of item rewards. A rune arc shop where players can spend their rune arcs earned through PvP to purchase all in-game items is highly recommended. However, it would be best to unlock the rune arc shop after completing new game plus to maintain balance. This approach would motivate gamers to engage in multiplayer for faster rune arc accumulation and enhance the overall gaming experience. Additionally, implementing upgrade materials as rewards, similar to Dark Souls 2, would be a nice addition to Elden Ring. These materials could be obtained as random drops in PvP encounters. It would be ideal if PvP could provide items that are useful for both PvE and PvP, creating more incentive for players. This system could also integrate with the leaderboard we discussed earlier, increasing the chances of a co-op slash host obtaining an ancient dragon smithing stone when defeating a high-ranking invader, and vice versa. And finally, we come to the most important multiplayer feature that is missing in Elden Ring. Have you noticed how Elden Ring's lore is filled with factions, kingdoms, and nations in conflict? The dragon cult, the confessors, assassins of the two fingers, carrier knights, fears champions, volcano mano recusants, mog's bloody fingers. Yes, we have a lot of different groups, but no covenants at all. Covenants would enhance the multiplayer experience by adding a role-playing element and creating a sense of belonging to specific factions. This addition would undoubtedly serve as a powerful motivator for engaging in more thrilling PvP encounters. Unfortunately, Elden Ring missed a significant opportunity by not implementing covenants, likely due to time constraints. The specifics of each covenant would be up to From Software, but the idea is presented here. Hopefully, we will see something about it in the DLC. Let's start pointing out the obvious. The current arena sucks, and that's because of two main issues divisive modes and the layout of the arenas. So let me explain to you why the current circular arena sucks donkey balls. First, the arena is extremely large and round. Huge maps and no corners means that an opponent can just run away the whole match, and under certain builds and latency conditions, they can be basically untouchable. To address this, a solution would be to repurpose Colosseum arena assets to create small square or rectangular maps with corners for skillful duels. Introduce maps with verticality, ample walls, and cover for projectile defense. Also, specific maps should be assigned to their appropriate modes, duels, combat ordeal, united combat, to maintain fair competition. This is especially important if quick matches with their own leaderboard that we mentioned earlier will be implemented to preserve skillful gameplay and point fairness. Another of the Colosseum's major issues is that it offers an excessive number of PvP modes and options that ultimately divide the player base, resulting in only 1v1 duels remaining active. 
To address this problem while maintaining the current range of player choices, we recommend the introduction of a quick match option and a lobby system, drawing inspiration from From Software's Armored Core 6. Quick match involves automated matches without password changes or map selection. Conversely, custom match operates like the lobby system in Armored Core 6, offering full customization. Selecting quick match offers four options. Any, duels, united combat, and combat ordeal. The any option is crucial, enabling queue access to all other modes, promoting team-based battles akin to invasions, but in an arena setting, addressing a missing element in the base game. Other modes under quick match would remain basic the same. It's very important that all modes, not just any, prohibit spirit summons, map selection and password changes to reduce player division and enhance matchmaking across all modes, not just duels. In other words, the more monkeys we gather in the same place, the better. If the previously mentioned leaderboards were to be implemented, they should be exclusive to quick match to prevent password cheating. Another mode for the arena, apart from quick match, could be custom match for those who want a more specific experience, you would have two options, Create Room and Search Room. Create Room lets you customize settings similarly to the current arena options, with the option to set a password or not. Under Search, you can find lobbies or rooms created by others. With a password, you only see rooms with the same password. Without one, you can join open rooms. This system provides visibility into active rooms, improving the experience compared to the current random join approach. Additionally, when searching for a room, you can choose to join if there's an available spot or spectate without occupying a slot. This feature is crucial in competitive games, enabling event organization and community engagement. In the case that the previous suggestions are too complex or time-consuming, introducing an any game mode option will be a very simple way to pull more players together and boost activity across all modes. Last but not least, the arena lacks phantom colours, causing confusion in United Combat and Combat Ordeal. Adding at least two distinct colours for United Combat would alleviate this issue. So... We have addressed all of the issues of the PvP system respectively, but there's a few more general quality of life changes that we also have to mention. Yeah, I know, I know, the game needs a lot of work put into it. We all know latency is always going to be there, but there are ways to make it less of an inconvenience. One of them being the implementation of a ping priority filter. This filter would prioritize players with better connections, ensuring stability. Unlike adding more regions, a ping priority filter doesn't segregate players by region, but selects the best connections from the entire pool. And another one being fixing the problem with easy anti-cheat, which has been proved to nearly double the ping between gamers. Finding a fix for this issue is important to keep players engaged and give the game a longer lifespan. Oh. For some reason, certain items have unnecessary limitations in PvP. For example, the Flask of Wondrous Physics can only be used once per life. Suitable for PvE, but problematic in PvP because in extended sessions it becomes just an empty Gatorade bottle in your inventory. Allowing it to refill after defeating a player would enhance long PvP sessions which come in abundance. Also, in the context of a six-player limit and fight clubs, this addition ensures that duelists can continue fighting and receive rewards for consistent victories. Another issue is that rune arcs are needlessly restricted in PvP. Why can't everyone use rune arcs during invasions or duels? For example, the host's advantage with great runes during a duel with a red summon duelist is unfair, or in three versus one cases too. Rune arcs should be accessible in multiplayer, especially for red duelist summons and arena fights, enhancing the importance of this game mechanic. Dark Souls 3 already had embers working in this manner for duelists, so it was a bit weird that rune arcs didn't work the same way. Reducing restrictions on great runes and physic flask effects provides more options for defense and health bonuses, mitigating the issue of excessively high damage in PvP, which leads to overly short fights. <sighs> Elden Ring's vast open world lacks suitable dueling spots with a site of grace in proximity, unlike past games like Dark Souls 3 with the Pontiff Arena. A quality of life improvement would be placing a site of grace within the Colosseum Arena maps to create community hubs. The beautiful Colosseum arenas remain largely unexplored, 
missing out on the potential for community fight clubs, especially if small, square and rectangular maps were introduced. If hardware limitations prevent exploring the Colosseum, consider adding a site of grace to the arena in Stormvile Castle, a well-sized and shaped arena currently distant from other sites of grace. Larval tears are key items that are used with Renala to change your character attributes. In a single playthrough, larval tears for attribute respects are limited. Once depleted, players must enter New Game Plus for more. PvP-focused players, often experimenting with builds, find this extremely tedious. To address this, it would be wise to offer balanced alternatives like Covenant Rewards or a Rune Arc Shop to obtain Larval Tears. A PvP-centred way to renew the item would maintain rarity and incentivize PvP participation. Also, the Demon Souls down-leveling feature should make a comeback but in a more user-friendly manner by utilising Larval Tears with my mum. This change would greatly benefit multiplayer activity, enabling players who have exceeded the level bracket where most others play to down-level and join them, saving hours of character to restarts. This, along with the earlier suggestion of infinite respects, simplifies build creation and enhances PvP enjoyment. You've made it to the end of the first part, Tarnished. I really hope that wasn't much of a sleeper for you. I want to point out that all of the changes and balances we suggested were previously implemented in other FromSoft titles. This is important because it shows that we are not asking for new and extravagant things, but for the return of community-loved features that would tremendously improve Elden Ring. In the next part, we will discuss more technical improvements and suggestions for the gameplay itself, such as frame data, poise values, and other little aspects that can enhance PvP and create a cleaner experience for everyone. But the best part is, you won't have to wait for FromSoft to implement those balance changes, because Part 2 will come with a free-to-use mod that already includes all the balance tweaks from Part 2. You can try them out yourself after watching the video. The community is putting a lot of effort into this, and we want people to know that PvP can be great, you know? It's not this scary boogeyman that everyone should fear, as some people think. It's a harmless, awesome activity where you can experience unique situations that you won't find in any other type of game. So if you've made it this far, we hope to see you in part two as well. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like, a comment, and most importantly, share it with friends. Consider subscribing to Only Waifu, Gabri, or any of the other wholesome nerds who made this video possible. Remember to eat fruits and veggies, and as always, thanks for watching.